Did you have an alter ego? Yeah, we spoke about it today. Uh, my alter ego is actually my real name and myself. So you have Genos and you have DJ. Yeah. Genos is, we spoke about it today. Genos is Drop Dead Fred. When you came to Denver and you hung out, that was Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> so I take him, I put him in a box. He only gets to come out three times a year. Right? If you say his name in the mirror five times, he's coming out. <laughs> what I've learned, what I've learned is it was a year where I tried to just keep him away the whole time. Tomorrow we'll figure out how to get out. <laughs> and when he do, he's gonna cause hell. <laughs> so bring him up. I like him. Yeah. Huh? I love him. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't. No, no, no. Everybody, everybody I'm loves so him. done with this part. Everybody loves Gino. <laughs> the first show we did. That was Gino. <laughs> oh, nah, lock him up. <laughs> lock him up. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know? Spike, spike your skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta light the wooden wheels straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, and my family needed bread. I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. Super excited about this one. Listen, I feel like every, the picture of a man, every man sitting in this room right now, we right here. And so you, every man needs another man uh, above them that they can follow. Men beside them that they can do life with. And then the man, you know, that's like kind of behind them, that's their mentee that they can pour into. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the perfect man. That's the perfect picture of what the, who the man should be surrounded by. You understand, Shady? So yeah, who are we looking up to? Uh, Who's I'm, pouring into us? Okay, okay. Who do we follow? Like, okay. Who are we doing life with? Okay. Yo, Shady, look, bro. Damn, bro, like, this is what I'm doing. Like, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And then it's the other dude, like, yo, I made that mistake, don't do that. Right, right, okay, I got So it. the reason why I'm super excited about this one is because, and this episode is because I was here and I had a brother here pouring into him. Mm -hmm. And you pour into this mentee so much, eventually they come here. Right, right. And this person has went from here in my life as someone I was pouring into to now they here and that sometimes they play this position that's for right, me right. where I'm like damn bro like this is what I'm going through help me out and that's fucking Robbie Anderson yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying yes sir <laughs> so I'm excited about this one and, and Rob I'm gonna jump right into it bro you know what I mean um people can google our history if they want to I may know I may not know but it feel like your dicky suit is symbolic that dicky hard though pause I'm feeling that. That's, you feeling that? That's an up north swag type thing, so I'm feeling that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but if you follow him from a fashion standpoint, bro, he he liked that. Right. For real. Put some Thames on you, really doing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, you know, you come on I Am Athlete, and, and people know on I Am Athlete, outside of Deej, he gonna wear no, dime yeah, life. Y'all had, had I, I stepped it up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you gonna wear dime life. You always wear brand. Go cop that tee, you know dime life. Like, but for time. real, like, we set trends sometimes. You come and you're in the dicky. Why? Cause I ain't want them to, you know, I always putting on drip, that's become nothing to me, you know what I'm saying? I didn't mm -hmm. want them to get caught up in the fit. I want them to pay attention to what I got to say, you know what I'm saying? What I stand for and all that, you know what I'm saying? And put on for the career too. So when you talk about like, so basically what I hear you saying is I want people to hear what I got to say, mm -hmm. right? What is that? And then when you talk about the crib, you know, there's gonna be a million people that watch this in the next month or two. Yeah. Where are you from? Broward County. Right. Walk us through it. Um, tell us your journey. A lot of um, obstacles, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, as I get older, I realize a lot of things kind of, you know, I take accountability for my part, but also too, like bro said, how you stunted it off somebody that, you know, lead you. I didn't always have that guidance, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And credit to my mom, she did all she could, but she's a, she's a woman. A woman can't teach a man how to be a man, right. you know what I'm saying? 
she did all she could, but ultimately I know my tribulations, I went through all those things for a reason that molded me to who I am today, and that's also where I gained my wisdom from too, you know? What's your upbringing, you know, like, for a kid like you being drafted in the third round? No, nah, un undrafted. Undrafted, damn, yeah. my bad. Un let's, let's do it. So, um, what's the story, you know, from a kid being undrafted, going through the mud, breaking into the system, being a starter, then being the guy, then being franchised. So like, like, what's 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 the story? Like, I, I heard you say you, you went through a lot of obstacles, but you gotta be a strong individual to go through the things that you've been to been through and, and to where you at now. And Shady was always good. That's Brandon true. was that always big. I was always pretty decent. Let him tell it. He is the best high school player that we've ever seen. Um, John Madden once said, I played, I played, John Madden said this. I love saying this story. John Madden said, okay, he said, this is the only high school athlete that can ever go from high school straight to the NFL. Then they That's what test, John Madden said. Then they drug tested him that same day. <laughs> I felt like that too, though. I felt like when I came out of high school, I was being ready to go to the league. Mentally or physically? Both. You, you know what, though? Like, mm. with you. But that's my, that's my confidence. That's, though, your, that's you your mentality. Me? That, like, like, bro, asked me, that's what got me through confidence, you know what I'm saying? And also, too, and know that what I came from, I'm not going back to that, you know what I'm mm. saying? But also, too, you know, I was kicked out of college, so I had that experience of what it's like not being involved in football. I was going to community college, no tutor, no. On um, study hard, no none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how the hell you let your, your grade slip, bro? Come on, tell the hold on, tell some young kid right here because college is easy. You can tell them that too. That there's no way in hell that they should be flunking out of college with all the resources they got. So just tell them, please tell them. So cause <laughs> nah, you, I ain't gonna that's lie. That's why I, you I, here, bro. I started off. I started off like you could say it was me and we. My major, you know what I'm saying? We the the structure. I tried to jump into the wrong major, you know what I'm saying? I should have just majored in just solely football and took Sports an easier education. route, but you know what I'm saying? I tried to do the politically correct thing, but also too, like, it was a lot of shit that went on with the people at the school. And, you know, when I, like, people don't know this, when I went on my visit to my college, I had long dreads, you know what I'm saying? Coach asked me, should I make you cut your dreads? The previous coach made them cut their dreads. Yeah, so. Also, too, when I went to college, I had got a heart operation and ablation, so I missed on uh, like the little training camp. You know what I'm saying? I came back. Is this your, is, my, what is this your my, my true year? freshman year hmm. at Temple? Yeah. So then, who was the head coach then? On um, Steve Adazio. Okay. Oh, so Adazio then, from Miami. He, nah, he that's um Adazio. Golden Golden okay. went to Miami. Okay. okay. But um, so you got there. I fresh get there. Campus. You know what I'm saying? I missed camp because the little situation. Whatever, whatever. So I get out there, I'm balling, you know what I'm saying? So like the fourth week I'm from the play, you know, that's when they decide they gonna red shirt you right, right. So they come up to me that week, they like, should we make you cut your hair? So I'm like, thinking they playing around, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, nah, like y'all, a man word is they word, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so long story short, we do the walkthrough. I'm walking out there, he like, come holler at me. Like, I don't want nobody to pull you by your hair, you hurt your neck, so I'm confused, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we supposed to hit it on the bus. So they pulled me up there. They like, you gonna cut it? I even trimmed it and all. So after that, I ain't cut my hair. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to play them, you know what I'm saying? Do my thing. Long story short, after that, just, it was just, I, I couldn't get right. You feel me? So then the following year, you know, I try to abide by what they got going on. You got, like I said too, I don't really have like nobody I can call on. Like Support. my high school yeah, coach yeah. to help me get out this seat. Right. I got my mom, but also too, Looking back, my mom ain't come me on my visit. I want to handle myself as a man, so they ain't got nobody to answer to. Yeah. It's just me, so it's like, it's my word against theirs. Yeah. Where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm 18, yeah. and you know, their job is to mold me into a man, guide me. So that's how things started off. So the following year, I cut my hair, I come back, still same old nonsense. But then the third year, that's how did, cold. How did that make you feel when, when you cut your hair? Because really quickly, this Can is I about say you. Mark, wait. Yeah. I was. I went to uh, West Virginia on a dual scholarship, and Beeline asked me to cut my hair to play basketball. To play you basketball? Tell you. Yeah, because I was going to play basketball and football. He asked me and Slim to cut our hair. Chris Henry got That's crazy, crazy so, bro. And we was like, oh, f 
No. <laughs> Hell no, this one Lil Wayne popping. We are not cutting our hair, bro. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't even, uh, and we would go over there and play against the boy and we would drag them. Like me, Slam, and we'd get two, two, three more of our, right. uh, like uh, Big Warren them. And we would drag them and it, it got up to like the next year and we just wasn't going. And he, he made everybody on the basketball team cut his hair. My, I mean to interrupt you, but go ahead. Bro. No, no, the reason why, no, that's a great point because, Pac, for it's me, terrible, at the end of my football career in the NFL, FS1 secretly reached out to my agency and was like, oh. yo, of course we love Brandon because I've been doing it for like five, six years, you know, when I was active. And it was like, we love him, but is he going to cut his hair? Because I started growing my hair out when we was with the Jets. They asked you that? They, they said that secretly. They ain't asked me that. That's they crazy. asked the other dude. So, like, I asked you that because, and, and I want you to pick up where you, the story that you was about to tell. But I, that, I think that's an important thing for our culture right. is, like, how did that make you feel when, when you had to actually do that? Because there's a lot of cats, you know what I'm saying, especially in football, in, in college basketball, that, the, the, those teams make ask all the way up there to make me change my whole identity for this ass program. Correct. But see, the thing was with me, it was like if you would have told me I wanted to go to out of all the other schools, I was committed to Western Michigan. Like they was rolling out the red carpet, going drooling over me all that. I wanted to go to Temple because I saw what they was heading, and I felt like it was going to be more challenging for me to make me a better person and grow. I mm -hmm. felt like if I went to Western Michigan, it was going to be easy. I wasn't going to never get out of my comfort zone and grow. So if they would have told me like, you know, that's what we want you to do, I probably would have did it coming in, but it's the fact that how they went Absolutely, about it. Yeah. But the following year, I'm like, I'm not finna, tr I'm trying to, not to have nothing get in the way. I just want a clean slate, you know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I, I, I did that, but it was still issues. It was still excuses, you know what I'm saying? And to me, it just felt like, dang, I, I, I felt like at the time they didn't want me to succeed or looking back, maybe like, they didn't wow. want to just make things easy for me because they wanted me to be better growing to a man. But long story short, the third year when Coach Rule came in, it was, it was a whole completely different story. Like he let mm. me go play football. He gave me the opportunity. And it seemed like all of them politics got removed. You feel me? I kind of pushed, I, I put, well, not kind of, I pushed back on you. Like you said, you hear athletes talk about this all the time. You know, well, I don't think, I don't know if they wanted me to succeed. No, I think at the end of the day, if they come and make the investment in you, saying we're going to give you the scholarship and we're going to invest, you know, I don't know what it is today, but $100,000 a year and maybe for football players, it could be even more because of all the other stuff around it. You know, when you talk about cafeteria, books, et cetera, et cetera, they want you to su su succeed. But some, but some the, hold on, the politics is big now. Yeah, but that's what I, my point is. They want you to succeed their way. Yes. They don't understand our culture. They don't understand you. And that's the difference between new media and old media. <laughs> but see, right. me, it used to be crazy. Like, for instance, that one year I'm supposed to play, I'm going to get the ball first play of the game. Then, like, the following year, I'm getting suspended for things I said a month ago. I'm supposed to get the ball the first play of the game. Now, ironically, I'm getting suspended for something I said a month ago. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like a lot of little weird stuff. But it is what it is, you feel me? That was right. my path, my journey, you know what I'm saying? But it, it was a lot of weird things went on. Right, so I, I got a little inside track. I had a big inside track because you and I, like I said, sometimes you might be in my life as a mentee, sometimes you're in my life as a brother. And now recently this year is the first year where you kind of giving me advice with certain things where I'm sitting back. It's cool, bro, like we live in the same neighborhood now. I'll jump in the golf cart, I'll shoot over to Robbie's crib, Gated community. Yeah, we like that. Okay. <laughs> I shoot over to his crib in my golf cart and he pull up and he like, bro, like what type of wine are you drinking? Let me go to the, you know what I mean? Let me go to the cab and then pull out a wine that you like. Right. And we in the garage. It's just amazing to me, bro. Bring tears in my eyes, you know, because of the journey. And he's like, we gonna sit here and chit chat. And he just speaking it to me. He, you know what I'm saying? Right. So this is like, hopefully y'all understand like, you know, why do you have this chip on your shoulder? What is this chip on your shoulder? Cause I know, I know I'm that boy, you feel me? And I know that a lot of the things I go through, it's like, I feel like a lot of times people don't want me to get the credit or the opportunity that I deserve. So 
I gotta fight for it. You feel me? I know it's not gonna, nothing's gonna be handed to me. Ever since Lily, you know what I'm saying? I played my first year in Lily, each skill position, they dad, the coach, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I've always had to fight through the politics and all the things, and I didn't have that red carpet, but also too, I know what I'm doing is, is inspiring kids that's going through them similar circumstances. So I always knew I'm going through these things for something bigger than me. And my biggest, my biggest thing is to inspire, you feel me? And I know a lot of people live through me. A lot of people that didn't make it in the position where I'm from, they live through me. People that's in situations, they live through me, my family. So that's why I keep that chip on my shoulder because I know nothing's going to be handed to me. Yeah. I'm going I'm to a, I'm a take it a step further. You can have dreads, then you can have wicks. It's, it's a big, big difference. So that's those, it's those a huge, it's, it's big a huge difference. difference. Okay. So break that down. So I'm, I'm gonna let him break it down. Uh, you, uh, you can have dreads and you can have wicks. And you went through that process where you tried to fit the mold and cut your hair. And then even doing so, it still didn't work. Mm -hmm. Now that you're successful and you've gotten to the position that you are, you can be your true, authentic self. Are the are the wicks a a symbol of that, right? Because the dicky suit with the wicks, that's, that's. I'm feeling it. I've, I've been in Miami for about 22 years. That is a symbolic set. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I used to always ask myself, how do you want because is wearing that and not sweating? <laughs> I, I, I swear all day. Boys used to wear leather pants and how they doing that and not sweating. But I asked you that is, is that, is that somewhat symbolic because uh, another individual, Played with me, University of Miami, Edwin James, Hall of Famer. His 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 mantra that he lives by and, and what he posts and he talks about a lot is he says, gold teeth to gold jacket. When he got into the league, he could have taken his gold teeth out, could have cut the dress, could have got a lot more money. But he said, you know what? If I do that, what am I showing back to the cribs that what am I showing back to the kids at the crib that look like me? Mm. So is that somewhat symbolic for you? For sure, and I feel like the biggest disservice you do yourself is not living your truth. Mm. You feel me? Like this is who I am. I don't feel like my hair should, cause one thing about me, people don't know I'm very intellectual. I know how to articulate myself and I've grown to that, but don't get caught mm. up in my appearance and be fooled by thinking my hair or look a certain way. I got a tattoo on my face or things like that. I'm dumb, you feel me? Cause that's where people be wrong and, and the misconception comes in. But I'm not gonna do myself a dessert. This is how I view myself. This is how I feel most comfortable as myself. So I'm gonna do me. You feel me? And I feel like a lot of times people trying to buy to society's rules, and then they look back at life and and and, and, and regret and resentment because they ain't do them. You feel me? And do you feel like you you've missed out um, on marketing? Do you feel like teams brands have kind of stayed away from you because of that look? And if you, and if so, are you happy with that? No, I don't think so. But I also feel like if they don't want me for my true self, then I don't want to deal with them. You feel me? And I know the things I've been through, certain things, they're not going to put me on certain things anyway. I'm, I'm okay with that. You feel me? My biggest thing is as long as kids want more importantly, what from Bride County is inspired by me, people inspired by me, that's what matters most to me. Being on the cover of a magazine or things like that doesn't, that's, that's mm -hmm. temporary, you feel me? I'm not in it for fame anyway, you feel me? I'm in this for longevity, you feel me? And my foundation, my principles as a man, like those things don't really move me, you feel me? And at the end of the day, I feel like what's for me is for me. What God has ordained for me, I'm going to get my blessings as long as I stay on my path, you feel me? I had a point, you know, and Miles probably was a little bit shaky than getting kicked out of school, but I got in trouble in Vegas, I get home, I'm looking around like, fuck, I can't go nowhere without nobody fucking knowing me. I said, I'm gonna cut my hair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking cut my hair. I'm gonna put on a fucking hat. That was your genius idea. Nobody gonna know who I am. Huh? <laughs> I stopped going to Vegas because of that. I got him out. For real, because of him? I, I, that whole, yeah, that mama. Hold on, I called the barber. I'm like, yo, man, come to the house. Your, your barber? Yeah, no, I, you know, the dude who used to do my line and shit while I had my hair. I'm like, yo, come to the house right quick, boom. Yeah. Man, he, he's there in about 10, 15 minutes. She upstairs. I said, hey man, chop this shit off. He looked at me, said, bro, no way, bro. I'm not doing it. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I took the clip, I'm like, 
clicked a little piece. Man, I chopped my hair off. And I really felt like I lost all of my fucking mojo. I walked in my mom's house. <laughs> I walked in my mom's house, she just started boo crying. Oh my God, he really crazy. He done cut his hair. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I went, I, I don't think at that time, I didn't do it to fit in the mold. I was doing it trying to get some privacy and that shit didn't help the privacy at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Actually, it made me feel um, a little less than a man that I would think that I had to change my personality, excuse me, change my personality to try to fit into something that they already said I'm misfit for. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and, and I commend you, bro, for sticking to your fucking gun and doing it your way. You Appreciate know what I'm saying? that, for sure. And that's probably the one thing that if if I could rewind time, I would have never cut my hair. Never. Mm. So 2015 was your first year in the league? Or the 16, 16 was? Yeah. Okay, so I played you in Buffalo, right? You was with the Jets. Yeah. And um, I remember. I was there. We. You was there? Damn, yeah, 16. <laughs> oh, no, you the was Jets. there. That, yeah, that, that was my rookie year. Too. That's that year you went oh, crazy. So he, he was, as you had Will Jack for like Hold on, turn on. Sorry, again. stay right there. Let me tell y'all when I knew this motherfucker was the real deal. Crazy, he was flying. No, let me tell y'all when you know. That shit don't matter. But it does matter. We was in practice. Okay, in camp. This dude comes out. He ain't talk at all. I can Shade. tell, I can tell he's quiet. Yeah, he quiet. I see him at the, the, the fight he gonna do to me. He, 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 it's like that chip that we talk about that he had on his shoulder. He always had a chip on his shoulder. He never talked. He'll listen. He'll listen to me and like look up, but he never like kind of like right, reply. Right. He don't push y'all like that. We go out to, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> but I can tell he can be vibe yeah, not with me. Up, but yeah, right. anyways, we go out to practice one day. But it's, he say, you asked him the question earlier, like when'd you know he thought he could go to the league out of high school, and you said mentally and physically. Yeah. This is skinny, okay? That's why I said physically. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, I said physically. Yeah, so he, little dude in my eyes, right? Little dude in my eyes, we go out to practice, and we in it, and I'm like a maniac on the practice field. He'll tell you, like, let's go, we competing. I'm looking for the number three receiver, because I knew that was the key. I'm like, who going to step up and be me, Eric Decker, and then who's the next? That's the dude, Deck okay? This dude goes out and practice, bro. Nasty attitude, but ain't saying nothing. And he has this beautiful ball thrown to him. He take it off the, off the. I don't know if it was Revis or Antonio Camardi. He took it off the hit. Stop, chill. He took it off the hit. <laughs> he took off the hit. He got up and he just stood up. And he just went like this. Hey. I said, oh shit. But but nah, I believe that because the more he started playing right with the Jets, you know, uh, you know, how I start I started track. That's my right, thing. Right. So they, the D-backs is like, yo, damn, they got they got a nice wide receiver over there. You know what I mean? Like, he played with a chip on his shoulder, right? Um, I forget the coach. I don't know if it was Sean or his Rex. Anyway, but they was talking about how, you know, he played with attitude. So I go to um, the Bucks, right? Um, and he's with the Panthers. Same thing. Like, yo, fam played with an attitude with a chip on his shoulder. Nasty. Yeah, so it was like. I guess I'm, I'm trying to ask you, from everything you've been through as a child and going through the college, you know what I mean? It, it, did that translate to the field? Because you played with an attitude, physically. You see what I'm saying? And mentally. I mean, also too, I played with the attitude too, because football, like, that was always my getaway. You know mm. what I'm saying? So like, since middle school, like, I'd be in trouble. Like, you know what I'm saying? In Saturday school, my middle school right behind my little league field, I'd be in Saturday school, go out there, and I gotta get all this out, cause I know when I go to the house, I'm going home to punishment. You feel mm. me? Like, but football was always my getaway. You feel me? And I knew like that was always gonna be my key and my way to like. That's how I got away from my problems from my childhood. Get things away. going home, man. You feel me? So that's how I released my anger. Like, B don't know this the whole time in training camp. My my rookie year, I had an attitude. I'm mad. I don't went undrafted. You feel me? I know. I ain't even get. They ain't even let me go to the combine. You feel me? You looking like. You nice, so like, every day, you nice, like, every day I'm, yeah. I'm mad out there, you feel me? But that's me? how like, his attitude so was, he been there I, like... I gotta let it out, you feel me? But that's how, that's just always how my getaway, you feel me? But, but even talking about, since you talk about football, I'm glad you said that, right? 
um, a dude like you with the attitude like that, right? From what you've been through and translating that to the field, you didn't have the year you wanted last year, right? Yeah. And I think the hardest part, especially as a, as a ball player that's been good his whole life, but been overlooked by different things, you can't control everything. You can't mm -hmm. control who throwing you the rock. Yeah. I can't control who blocking for me. I can't yeah. control it. Right. Tell me that whole, your mindset, because I don't want you to say it because you know, I know how it is with your quarterbacks and your, your teammates. Sam Darnold, he not like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Although he did play solid when C-Mac was playing. How, your mindset, how do you handle that? Because you can't control it. This year going into it, you know, my job is to make him look and be as best as I can. You know what I'm saying? That's the quarterback. But how I'm looking at it is, it's not about who's that quarterback. It's the ball. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I can't control the plays, the O line, and, and especially going based off last year. I just brought myself back to my mindset from my rookie year. Nothing was guaranteed, but that day. You feel me? So every time the ball comes to me, I either gotta go score or get a first down. That's how I'm, you feel me? I gotta make the most of everything. So that's just how I'm approaching the season, back how I did when I was undrafted. Because at the end of the day, nothing was guaranteed. Then nothing's guaranteed now, you feel me? I, I hear that, and I, I know you don't, type, you don't seem to type the cap. Yeah. I hear you, but, <laughs> you know, you care who your quarterback is. You do care, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, because I seen, you know, a tweet, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I would have said the same thing. See, my problem was, I think, my career, I mean, because I was like that, but the problem was sometimes my mouth and my attitude got me in trouble because I was so passionate. Right, right. But, like, I seen they, they talked about bringing um, Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Like, he might be coming to to the Panthers because yeah. Cam, Cam couldn't do it. And Sam, yeah. I mean, you know, he really couldn't do it. So when they said it, he was like, no, <laughs> if he come, yeah. I got to retire. Like, right. put, this, put, the, put the cleats on the joint. All right. So... You do care who the quarterback is, right? Yeah, for so sure. Talk about that because I just, that matters. That was, that I felt like when I was doing that, that was in defense of Sam. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, okay, okay. I feel like at the end of the day, me and Sam do have chemistry, but it's like, well, I got to start all over again. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no disrespect to him. Nothing. I wasn't taking it. It was just really in defense of who my quarterback is right now. And see, that's a perfect example because as I, as I absorbed the, the story, I took it as, Baker, you're trash. Not as, I like what we got here, right. and it might not have been the best year. Baker. Hold on, it might have not been Nobody the best year. Nobody wants Baker, bro, you can tell Wait, 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 listen. It might have not been the best year, but I see glimpses and some chemistry can evolve to I, where it can I, be I, I will say this with Sam, though, you know what I'm saying? Let's hear this. I feel like his development was all messed up coming into the league. I don't feel like, but look at Pat and look at Lamar. They ain't play right away. I don't feel like Sam should have played right away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's just, I feel like his career got jump started the wrong way. I feel like being in the building, the coaches, the, I was there, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was all, it wasn't right, you know what I'm saying? So in his defense, I don't feel like he was developed 100% correctly. So let, let, let me, wait, 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 let me get on to that, dog. You've yeah. had him in two spots. Yeah. And, and the question is, hey, can he get it done or can he not get it done? Yeah, that's because right. At the end he of see the day, ghosts, too. And, and, and I'm just saying, if you <laughs> see ghosts, you can't play when you see ghosts. That's what he said. He said, oh, man, coach, I, I don't know. I see, like, four linebackers. I see, like, 80 uh, D-backs. I see ghosts. <laughs> if he said that, we in trouble. Bro. Oh, man. Well, you heard that. I thought you was like, ghosts. Wait, wait, he came out and, and said that? Yeah, he said that. Yes, he said that. He but said when that. you go back and look at it, you're only good. Is the guy beside you. Yeah. Your motherfucking eyes, you're only good is the guy beside you. My motherfucking eyes, I'm only good is the guy beside you. Right, right. You hear what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, and you're a hell of a receiver. I really think that your numbers doesn't speak for themselves because of the situations you've been in. Not for sure. You know what I mean? Can, we, can, we, stop, right can we stop it? And throw you in Let's the stop Cincinnati, it. Can uh, we stop it? Oh, no, but like, oh, no, 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 no. Let's stop you it. Just, you my brother. This is my brother. Like, I'm not going. I'm not going to do this with my brother. No, we not. We not getting there. I just want to ask. No, you. No, 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 let me get there. How can I get there? How do you handle that though? Seriously, because that matter. Listen, last year was frustrating. Last year was frustrating. I'm gonna tell you, last year was weird because I seen my first year in Carolina. I came with that kid. I was top five. Yep. Throughout the whole year, and I remember my that, yep. production slowed down. Probably yards. politics, you know what I'm saying? Because 
we they they knew like you we understand the business of it you know what i'm saying i was on track to go crazy you feel me things slow down you could call it what it is i got my thousand you feel me my role last year with things i mastered the year before i wasn't doing it was weird you know what i'm saying but the first three weeks i kept quiet because we was winning you feel me i'm a team player that's one thing about me i ain't never been that guy that's gonna go in there we winning i ain't getting the ball i ain't gonna say nothing because we winning I, my biggest thing yeah. i want to win the bowl you feel me yeah. for real so long story short <laughs> last year was just weird you know what i'm saying like i'm not getting but i'm doing all i can so at the end of the season long story short i look back it was the last week i'm writing writing down my notes in the team and i'm like what are you frustrated about then i asked myself i said what if you are frustrated what you're frustrated about can you control can and you slow down corners time out that was big right time now. out that was bro. big time out. Right that's here. why i told y'all this motherfucker right here y'all gotta listen to his ass Look that hold up. a time out now reverse what you just said were you in the team meeting room that. what did you write down bro there's a lot of people listening yeah, to I'm, you. In the, I'm, I'm in the team repeat that that's Went over a lot of people's heads season. real quickly. A lot of people could take from it. Go, go, go. So last week of the season, I'm in the team meeting and I'm writing down in my notes, what am I frustrated about? Then I asked myself, I said, what of your frustrations can you control? And I had to realize I couldn't control the play calling. I couldn't control the ball being thrown to me. That wasn't, that. that's the things I was mad about. You know what I'm saying? The latter part of the year when Cam came in, you know, bro lifted my spirit. I was, I was, I was down, you feel me? I was sad because I had very high expectations for myself last year for the team and all those things, and it, it didn't go that way. Bro came in, he lifted my spirit. Things kind of changed, you know. I don't want to point the finger at the OC, but kind of when bro did leave, I started getting more opportunities. But long story short, last year was it, it is what it is. But I can only learn and grow from it. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I elevated I a lot as a man, and more importantly, I elevated my work ethic. When things wasn't going right, I ain't, I ain't go home and complain. I stayed in the building longer. Bro called me, he was in Carolina. He FaceTimed me one night, like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm in the building. He like, damn, you done turned into a real pro. So I just took it as ways to work harder. When I get the, got the ball in practice, I'm turning up, I'm going to scope, you feel me? Cause if I get that in the game, I gotta go scope, you feel me? So I ain't let it break me, you know what I'm saying? I just let it make me elevate. That's why I said, I uh, and listening because there was real work being done behind the scenes where we had conversations mm -hmm. and I'm like, bro, when I hit hard, like yeah. learn from my, my mistakes and other wide receivers mistakes, you know, that's when you celebrate everybody else's success. That's when you, you know, you go block, you go do the dirty shit. You just keep your head down because you in your contract year, mm -hmm. don't get them no excuse. Right. right? And so there was work and, and, I, and I'm saying that because I, I'm proud and I'm not trying to have this conversation about me but I am proud. Appreciate that. When did it click for you? Where, because I, if I'm being honest, bro, like I didn't, I felt like for like maybe two, three years, I wasn't getting through to you. Yeah, no, for sure. And so like, when was the moment where it clicked for you? Because that was a moment, you know, last year when you was playing with Carolina, cause you know, Peck, you know this shit, man. You know, when you see a pro, you know, when you see a dude that you can count on. And I called him just to check in and, and he was, he was up at the facility at eight at night. I'm like, oh, he different. He got it. Yeah. That's when I made that comment. Early so when did it click? Early on in my career, bro, I was like, like Otto said this, but I was, I was raw. I was raw. You know what I'm saying? I was raw. I wasn't seasoned. You feel me? Now I'm, I'm, I'm marinated. You feel yeah. me? I'm seasoned. Mm -hmm. I'm cooked up. But like 2016 going in, I'm, you feel me? I'm just doing the, what I think I know. Going into 2017, like I was really coming off the couch, you know what I'm saying? Like just working out with my uncle, you feel me? Same thing in 2018. But when I came to Carolina and I got with Teddy, that's I feel like that's when I kind of learned how to like truly be a pro and like Teddy kinda, Bridgewater. Yeah. Right? Like bro really showed me how to like really be a pro and grind. And you know, that was COVID. Me and him was down here getting it in. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I really felt like I took that jump. Kind of like 2019 a little bit too. But a moment with me that I really feel like made things click for me. We had this dude come talk to us on um, 2019 at the Jets. Like his name is Elko. He goes to like Alabama. Spoke and, to me in college, my yeah. whole college career. I know about I who, learned who? Word. David Elko. Yeah, David Elko. Yeah. And he taught us and the main thing that stood out from him and it, this was like a life changing moment with, for me was the word accountability. Mm. And once I learned, understood that word for a lot of my mistakes and a lot of things, it's like I, I found peace, but I also really unlocked my mind. And then also too, a lot of things with me was 
separating myself from what I was surrounded by outside of football. You okay. know what I'm saying? That's what has given me this peace and, you know, separation comes with elevation. You feel me? So that's where a lot of these things I, I, I changed as a man outside of football and it gave me that, that peace to focus to this extent. Like, like what though? Speak on that. Yeah, like the people. The energy, I mean, my my first couple of years, I'm I'm coming still chilling on the block. You feel me? Huh? Yeah, like I'm still I'm still <laughs> oh, I'm still, yeah. I'm still on the he block. the cameras. He must be where I'm from. So let <laughs> let's talk to the people. <laughs> Undrafted. First year, he coming back home and doing what? I was chilling on the block. <laughs> Tell the people what chilling on the block means. Posted in the hood. You feel me? Like you grow but back. my thing was. I ain't want to seem as if, okay, bum, I got money and went Hollywood. And also, too, I ain't know nothing else. You feel me? Right, like, right. I ain't even know, like, what Ruth Chris was until my rookie year. Like, all these <laughs> things. I ain't oh, know all like this, you, this, this life and all this stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I had to learn as I went. But to me, that was normal. You know what I'm saying? These my people. This what I'm doing. That's what I'm used to. This how I got here. You feel me? So, and I'm not saying this out of the ordinary because I did the exact same thing. Yeah. I just wanted to hear you say it. No, nah, for sure. So that's what I was doing my first few years. You know what I'm saying? Then, ironically, like 2018, it was like a Friday night. My cousin, my homegirl, she called me like, where you at? Where you at? I'm like, what, what happened? She like, I heard gunshots. Cause she right there on the block. You feel me? Ironically, usually I would have been down there. It's Friday, OTAs. I, usually I'm first flight out on a Thursday. My cousin got shot. You feel me? So. Moments like that kind of changed me then. Mm. God bless the dead X, Triple X, X the Tassion Ja, he got killed. That's what's something that really made me realize, like, you know, I need to I need to change up how I'm moving, you know what I'm saying? So 20. Did he grow up in the same area you from or something? You know, he's from down here. He's from oh, down he's from here down? too, but he's younger than me, you know what I'm saying? But it's all like all the same, you feel me? So yeah. long story short, like that, that those mm. type of things kind of made me realize like. You can't this far to keep doing all this. You know what I'm saying? And I had to realize too, the energy I was surrounding myself. I love them boys, you feel me? But I had to realize like, we ain't completely different paths. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't even have these conversations I need to be having with yes. them. And there's no disrespect to them, but we live in completely different lives. And those type of things what was had me kind of like, not to the point where I need to be, you feel me? That's not, that's not easy. That's not easy to that's, get away from. That's definitely not so easy. So how, how, how did you do that? Because that's hard. That's hard. So did you grow it? Because if I ain't have Jerry Jones, I don't know if I'll be sitting here talking. That, but but bro, that guys, because, guess pack, what? Pack, pack, pack. I was the same way, bro. Like my wife would tell you, I was the six overall pick, twenty years old, twenty million. Come on, give me twenty cars. We in the we at the block. <laughs> to my me, <laughs> Jeezy, yeah. Till. At that time, Gucci, um, Free Your Soul, Big Meats. I'm talking about we were at the block, chill. <laughs> and I didn't understand that I went to Dallas after my suspension. And Jerry told me, he said, hey, man, come here, let me, let me tell you something. He's like, now, if you want all this shit to go away, two things you got to do. First thing, you got to play good football. Hmm. That's first. You got to play good football. Second thing, you got to stop doing everything with your ass out in the street. Mm -hmm. And when he said it, I was like, that man, stop doing everything with your ass out in the street. And he said, come here. He said, what I mean ass out in the street is everybody don't need to know what you're doing. You don't need to be on the block when you go home. It's okay to enjoy your 40 acres and these 10 cows out here. Learn how to be with yourself. Mm. And I didn't understand the part about just don't do it with your ass in the street. Mm. And to this day, Paul man, Jerry Jones for, for the. And, for I'm, I'm, I, and this is no bullshit. And to this day, and I, I commend you for figuring it out. But I don't know if I would have figured it out. The hardest part was realizing, been on these motherfuckers. It's my whole life, you know what I mean? And we like, yeah, damn, why should I stop with them just because I got that? And then you start realizing like, God damn, I'm waking up every morning going to goddamn workout. These bitches ain't doing shit. They over here just smoking at the top of the block. I don't got them, I don't let these stay in the house three, four times. These bitches ain't doing shit. These, you know what I mean? Trash and they ain't even taking the trash out. 
<laughs> yeah. God damn, bro. I'm letting y'all pay. Y'all getting every benefit that I'm getting. At least. At, at, at the least. You know what I mean? Take the trash out. Keep the house clean. Do the little shit. You know what I mean? And when you start really, you, you have some of them that understand the bigger picture. You know what I mean? And then you'll have some of them that we didn't have nobody to teach us before. Like you said, I ain't never know what a uh, stuffed chicken breast was from fucking Ruth Chris. Right. Hey, when I first had the chicken breast for Ruth Chris, bro, I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. They got a baked chicken breast with cheese in this motherfucker. <laughs> no, Isn't that corn on blue? Ain't that what's that called? I'm like, this Good is the best in the world. Where I come from is fried chicken at every Friday, <laughs> white and fish, maybe some tilapia, salmon croquette. Block cheese, you know what I mean? This one up front. Right. Nachos, chitlin, you know what I mean? That's Collard it. greens. Ain't none of that. Psh, I ain't never seen that shit. But let, let, you ain't let him answer. I wanted to know, how do you separate yourself from them homies? Because that's hard to do. I mean, what really was when um, I went to jail the second time, 2018, and mm -hmm. down here in Broward, you know what I'm saying? And I go in, everybody in there see me, but it's like, damn, bitch, my dog up the road, he doing 10. You know what I'm saying? My little cousin, he right in here. You feel me? He facing, fighting what he fighting. But I done went through all this shit and I'm right back here. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's the, you know what I'm saying? Like that little situation, that was like, that was, that was the beginning of 2018. Then my cousin got shot. Then X get, like those, those Bad moments, up. you know what I'm saying? Made me realize like the other side of this, this where you, this where you headed to. You worked this hard to be where you are now. You heading right back to where you started at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, Jay-Z Jay -Z got a crazy line. He says, <laughs> he says, dang. He said, they said Jay changed. Like, I worked this hard to stay the same. So I asked you, October 5th, right, um, 2018, right? You talked about the situation. Speak about that. Let Because everybody don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. What are you talking about? No, that was in January. Oh, that was the crazy thing about it, like, I called, like, it was like, I just came off 2017, had 940, catch a two away from a thousand, right. Josh McCown get hurt. You know what I'm saying? A breakout season, less than a month later, I go end up going to jail again. You know wait, what I'm wait, saying? Wait, this is this is this going into my third year. Okay, okay. 2018 so, going into my so third year. Okay, right, right, right. So it's like, damn, you done, you was just at the top of the world, now you back at rock bottom. Like, like it's like I just got this yo-yo effect with my life. You know what I'm saying? Like even with college, I have a big year, I get kicked out of mm. school. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I had to realize, like, bro, you 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 about to be considered a fuck up. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I had to really sit back and get myself right. You feel me? And it was it was hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, 2018, I'm playing on probation. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not normal. When I go to court. The judge trying to tell me I can't travel. My lawyer, like, he, he travels work. for he <laughs> travels for a living. You feel me? So it's like I'm going through these situations, but I don't need to be going through this nonsense and. The situation with me going to jail, I was speeding and all that, but everything happens for a reason, you know what I'm saying? Like, that had to happen for me to probably sit back and wake up and realize, and, you know what I'm saying, by the grace of God, I'm still here. Like, because there's a lot of situations and places I probably could have been based off the decisions I made, yeah, you feel me? You but God, God was always looking yeah, over me and kept that. angels with me, you feel me? And that's what I had to go through. But also, too, I know kids going to look at me and see, I don't got to make the mistakes, you feel me? Like just do right, you feel me? Like, just get good grades, stay out of trouble, don't do the things you're supposed to do, and it makes everything simple, you feel me? I really think that's cool to say that sounds easy, but it's not as easy for us in the city youth. These kids are gonna look at you, brother, and they're gonna see some of the shit that they, they see in myself, as in, God damn, they this glorify kid, it. He, he been through ups and downs, but it's always, Good when we can talk about it. Now for sure. Also, saying? too, I know like, like you got a purpose. Certain bro. things, you know, we are products of our environment. Right. You feel me? And yeah. that's why I had to realize like this what I'm surrounding myself in this was translating to my life in a sense. I need to separate myself yes. from all of this, you know what I'm saying? And create a new environment and life and setting for myself. Snoop Snoop said this in uh in an interview talking about you know, when he first came on death row making money, he said he went here. And the phrase he said was bridging the gap, mm. right? He said him and his homeboys that he grew up with, they was all moving like this. Then all of a sudden they hit the glass ceiling. He kept moving like this. 
And then what he realized was in order for him to hang with them, be cool and interact, he had to come back down. He had to come back down to them. Mm -hmm. So that stopped his growth, right? And he said it was one of the hardest things for him to do was to realize that all the hard work and all the things that he's put forth for himself, he was hurting himself by coming back down. Yeah. So what he decided to do was continue to grow. And if I got a partner, if I got somebody in the family or whatever that's doing something, doing positive, support them. And he said, I never felt bad because I never came back down. It was their responsibility to come up to me. That's, I'm so glad you brought that up because most of us though, like, you know, we have to go through, that happened, that, tra that transformation happened for Snoop after that stabbing, right? And that's when he said, okay, I had this awakening. And a lot of us have this awakening after an arrest or we're in a jail cell. Like we're a product, like what you said, we're a product of our environment. You know what I mean? And, and that's why I actually salute you. And when I said like you play this role in my life at times where it's like, you've been here for a long time. And then sometimes you're my brother. And then recently the last year where it's like, damn, I'm sitting back and I'm smiling, but I'm actually listening to him. You know what I mean? Because that, that was the hardest thing for me. And I never actually got that right when I was playing was cutting ties with the people, like the people that was that I came up with and I went here and I came, you know what I'm saying? That's why, that's, that's, that's when you come here for me because of like over the last 18 months, you ascending to that position where you're like, you know what? Let me put these boundaries in place so I don't have to come back down. You understand? Like I, I've been fighting that for a very long time. Look, and I think a lot of us do. I, it's easy, bro. Living, living in Miami, every weekend is somebody's birthday, somebody's in town, somebody coming to celebrate or whatever. I've been here 22 years, right? Around five years ago, well, even more, maybe about seven years ago, I cut that shit out. It was simple. Somebody come in town? Yeah, I live, in, I live in Coral Gables. Slide through, we can have lunch. Don't say nothing about South Beach. Don't say nothing about no boat. Don't say nothing about <laughs> live, right? So even like you're like, it, it's not as hard to, to, to weed people out. The, the easiest way to weed people out is to invite them to do things that have true substance. Because mm -hmm. when we drinking, we smoking, it's music, it's chicks around, everybody living, it's the vibe. And what I learned was when I started trying to ask cats to drive 15 more minutes to come have lunch with me at 2 p.m., it's like me telling my mama to come watch the kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if you, if you want to weed keep cats out, start inviting them to do something that has substance yeah. that, that, that isn't VIP. We living. We on a boat. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at the crib. Just come through the crib and just chill. Is chicks there? Nah, bro. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We just chill and smoke a cigar and vibe out. Man, I'm going to holler at you, bro. Mm. You start the weed cat, bro. I'm telling you, my phone, my phone don't ring no more after eight o'clock. Don't nobody invite me. Don't nobody come in town and say nothing to me no more because I went for a full year and a half of just inviting people to do things that have substance, mm -hmm. kind of purposely born like me and you. We don't got to be on the boat. We ain't got to be in no club. We ain't got to be at the prime 112. We ain't got to do none of that, bro. Come by the house. We gonna, no, ain't no chicks there. Ain't no gap. Ga We're going to just vibe out. Let's watch the game. And then you start to find out who your real ones is. We got at least gamble, bro. Like, and you start to find out who your real ones is and ones that's just kind of around you for the facade, right. bro. And that's nah, a perfect also, example. Also, two side of culture, I like me, my son, I did, especially like the past couple years, I just fell back. You know what I'm saying? I realized like, I'm the one doing like the reaching out, trying to, you know, ordain, every, put everything together. Like, who gonna just- Spend the money You too. good, like you straight, like simple stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's not supposed to just be go out, pop bottle, do this, do that. But a lot of people want to have that benefit off what you done earn. And then God forbid you done spent all this money on everybody. They ain't going to do nothing but laugh at you. you feel I'm, I'm I'm them call, how many of them called you once you got locked up? <laughs> see, that's the, see, that's another thing that opened my eyes to that situation. I'm hearing feedback like 
they chit, so they laughing. You feel me? Like, damn, bitch, just I'm. You feel me? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all see him in there, don't even post damn, my boy. Goddamn, you know, he just got down. He over there doing that same old shit. He messing it up. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But then you come around, they don't say nothing. Yeah. Obviously, though, but I had to learn those those lessons the hard way, but it all happened for a reason. And that's why I like, I'm to the place of peace where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still love on my end. You know what I'm saying? I wish the best for people I had to separate myself from. I hope that they still feel the same way towards me, but I had to realize like them, them that energy and surrounding myself around things like that was kind of holding me back. But what I realized is, what I realized, like I brought my nephew who, who who he's like that? I ain't I ain't, I ain't gonna sugarcoat nobody. What grade? And nothing. He gonna be a senior. He liked that he played quarterback in Atlanta. I moved him to wide receiver, so he's still learning the position. Like. When I'm when I introduce him to you, I realize I was like, damn, like Robbie, bro, he reached this youth. You know your look, your style, your sound, everything. And so my question for you is. What message do you do you leave with the youth, right? That's watching this show, because they will watch this show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's the number one thing you want to relate to them? I mean, stay true to yourself. You feel me? You know, stand on, stand on your principles, your morals as a man. That's right. You know, respect women, respect people, your elders, respect people in general, you know what I'm saying? Like, stay humble. Like, don't look down on nobody, feel like you better than nobody. You know, stay true. Like, don't let nobody discourage your dreams. You feel me? Like, all right. So the last three years, I think y'all only won five or six games every season. Mm-hmm. So is this season? Is it a rebuilding season, or is it a, a proving season? What it, What's going on in the OT? How was the OTAs? What What What, what is this season for you guys over there? Carolina? I think. I mean, it better not be no rebuild. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's the case, but. You know, the goal is to win a Super Bowl. That's the goal, that's the mission, that's what we've been working for for the last two years, you know what I'm saying? So I think everybody's to that point. It's our third year with our coach where it's time for us to put everything together from each, hold each cylinder. Hold, hold up, hold <laughs> I'm up. I'm glad you cut it off. Hold up, up hold up. Because like I said, you, you ain't the cap type. That's that's the most <laughs> general <laughs> <laughs> rebuilding. We, we working <laughs> hard and, and the ultimate goal is good. Come on, man. That ain't, that ain't gonna win that. Yeah, that ain't gonna win. Which I, what do y'all need to do? To, to, Cause y'all got yo, real talk. They got players though. I know it sounds funny because their records and you know what they've been doing. But if you look across the board with him, with DJ, and then with, you want to talk um, football? Nah, real talk. Cause I, I gotta get a real answer. Cause that that was just you want to play, you want to practice hard every day, step <laughs> by step. What do, what do y'all really need? Yeah, we need to win. What do y'all need to win to get a Super Bowl? everybody to be consistently at their best. But I think, too, our coaches, you know what I'm saying, putting everybody in their best position, you know what I'm saying, and everybody doing their best consistently as a team, though, you know what I'm saying? I feel Is like, it the quarterback? <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna blame, I ain't gonna blame just him, you know what I'm saying? Cause last year he was playing good, you know what I'm saying? That's true. Things started falling apart. It was, it, 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 went, it was a point where everybody was playing good, everybody was playing their role. McCaffrey got hurt. Yeah, the offense, they was trying to probably put too much on him. So then when he came out the picture, that's when things probably got a little discombobbled. Our defense was playing real good, He's but good. you know what I'm saying? Things Which was a problem the year just, before. The yeah. defense was a problem the year before that defense line was trash. They re- yeah. Defense ain't bad though. Nah, our defense, our defense, defense live, you know no, what I'm no, saying? No, like no. our defense live, we got some real, we got big corners, yep. good corners, you know what I'm saying? Like defense, like we got a good coaching style, you know what I'm saying? I just, that's why I say everybody just collectively got to be consistent Speaking and do their best. You feel like it's a it's a make or break a year for the head coach? No, I don't think so. So I know you got a you got a great relationship with him, right? Because yeah. he vouched for you and you know what I mean College. the temple situation. Yeah. You don't feel like it's a make or break? No, I don't think so. Cause I think I think any 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 organization like I don't know, I just like you know, I ain't gonna over speak because I ain't no GM that really in my place, but mm-hmm. I, I personally don't think so. I think that he has a real good relationship with owners. And the what about the, with the players? Not a player. Because a lot of that that's that's very important, right? Yeah. Like when you keep continue to have these bad or losing seasons, if you can have, you know, player guys like you, uh, you know, top dogs on a team that will say, Hey, I know the production and the numbers aren't showing, but the chemistry is getting there and we yeah. slowly, we slowly building it. Do you feel like he has that type of 
connection and relationship with the team to where guys would stand up on the table for him and go up and speak for him. I think so. You know what I'm saying? From my perspective, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't, I can't speak for everybody. But right. from, he talked very highly of, I want to say this, he talked very highly yeah. of you and the relationship that you guys got because I went back and Googled a lot of it. Yeah. And he, I will say this, he, he, he have a soft spot in his heart for you, but yeah. I didn't interrupt you. No, nah, for sure. But me personally, like speaking for myself, I, I, I feel like he's an honorable man. You know what I'm saying? Like other people might have, they say so, you know what I'm saying? Me and him have butted heads, you feel me? But when you have chemistry with somebody, something you can do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're not going to always agree. Right. You feel it's me? But, respect. Yeah. Right. Y'all done talking football? That last, last question though, right? Because I've been on a team where you're supposed to say, you might like the quarterback. And I won't keep killing him because we see his play. Mm -hmm. But my thing is like, when he playing that bad, and he's in the training room and the offense, we all there together. We just watch the tape. He throwing picks to everybody. <laughs> and the, now, how do you keep the, the, the team in the locker room together? Like, how'd y'all do that? Because I know that happened. That had to yeah. happen. I mean, no, you can't control that. It's tough, but I will say, I feel like this year, I feel like the offensive coordinator you have, I feel like that's, that's I feel like it's going to be able to hopefully mold him into what everybody expects him to be. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, like I said, his first year, things was rough. Coaching staff, I don't feel like he should have been playing the second year. He didn't really have him. He had that bad game against New England, but also too, he missed five games. He got sick mm, in that situation. Right. Yeah. I had like 780 or whatever. I would have easily had a thousand if he ain't missed five games, you know what I'm saying? And then the, his third year in New York, I left. You know what I'm saying? He had he every oh, a receiver was yeah, hurt every week. Yeah. Damn, you know what I'm saying? So he kind of done de been dealt some bad cards. Last year he was doing, he was doing pretty good. Things got a little discombobulated, so I feel like this year should be his breakout year. The offense changed crazy with with C Mac, because well, you know I be gaming on the games. <laughs> Why is it that yo like y'all was rolling? Soon he got hurt, the, the, it went this. Shit. You know how that is. Speaking of yeah, hurt, my, my my my, I was just about to say that. So uh, just in case, same <laughs> thing happened last year. Um, <laughs> you spoke you spoke highly of Kim. Do we sign Cam and Cam? Uh, hell no. Oh, shut the hell up. Hell no. Can I get Cause he you, not gonna say it. Can you give me, can I, Don't can sign you let Cam. me get through saying what I was about to say? Not with Cam. Can we sign Cam to be the backup for insurance? Because oh. Cam know that he's a backup now. That's Cam I know that? I feel like with, with yes. Cam, I feel like he gave our team life. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like his presence, it, it speaks volume. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm -mm. And. That's just my opinion. I know the relationship I had with Cam. Cam showed me ways to work harder. You know what I'm saying? He, he helped me become better as a man, more importantly than just a football player. You know what I'm saying? I feel like for the culture of the Panthers, like he's he's a he's a big figure. The owner love him. Like, and Cam's my boy. We have a unbelievable relationship. Um, and I just told him two days ago, go to Carolina, be a backup. They love you there. What did he say? Um. I, I, he didn't give me no answer. It's Ain't no also. So you said no. It's a difference from yeah. it's a difference from going to be a backup to to feel like I'm finna get my shot and really get back out well, there. No, 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 no. And right. then to say I'm just a backup. Man, I, man that's one a thing big about that's a, that's a, I ain't gonna lie. That's nah. a hit on the legacy. One thing I ain't about going no. I I would have never went nowhere and been a backup. You. Yeah. Like like just backup. You started not every saying, year. In not the saying league? like you're not the number one. Hold on. But look, B. Correct. When such and such needs some rest and some breathers, we're going to put you in. Yeah. It's different, different than the quarterback. It's position. different for a receiver because, like, for me, the transition could be tight end slot guy. You catch less balls. So, but I'm still active in the but, game but, plan. But what I'm saying is, is you second, wasn't a second starter pick, in second, the league no, at linebacker. Second pick overall. Yeah. Gino right though, bro. Second pick overall, made it to the Super Bowl. Cam Newton, Superman, all that, to really just be there. Everybody's not proper like that. Though, I know, bro. but that's I, what I he's saying. Him. Can he now go to backup? Right. Like, that's hard. It's the difference between going in and saying, you know what, I'll earn my right, and I'll I'm, eventually I'm going to go in there and compete, to saying, you know what. I'm just But I feel like the last year with Cam, Cam, Man, Cam, Cam is in way a, more deep than in, what y'all saying. He oh. came in in a crazy little situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, he came in and played the first week, then the next week, we played Washington. He pretty much played it. He pretty much played a perfect game. My defense, just being real, they couldn't get off the field. They gave up like fourth, fourth, and fourth down conversions. 
You know what I'm saying? Bruh played, knowing the playbook after two weeks, you know what I'm saying? That's if impressive. you probably give him a whole offseason with the offense and all and all that, you can't, you can't really, you know what I'm saying? As a brother to you, you have a lot of jewelry on. Mm. How you go about buying your jewelry? Like, what can you speak to the youth? Like, I'm laying you up to speak yeah. to the youth about like finances. Okay. Mm. So you got a lot of jewelry on, even the watch, I think, is what is that called? A right Richard off. Millie? I sold you two of them. You, know you got two of them. Is that two hundred thousand dollars? Well, he said, he said, ah, 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 ah. That boy got so, bro, so, so, so mm. educate, you know what I'm saying, us on how you go about splurging. And mm. two, you got uh, the side show. Like, is that? Uh, that's my twin. Yeah, what does that mean? Does so that that's a two-part question. That's that. a two-part question. Boom, go. So now with my jury, you know what I'm saying? Like, as I done got older, you know, in plain Jane watches investments, you feel me? Especially I had done really dove in. Cam put me on game about that, you feel me? Like mm, for him and nice. my him and my jeweler, you know what I'm saying? But I jumped into like buying plain Jane's like towards the latter year of the season. And I had not seen something pop up. Like they said, watches are up in investments more than like crypto, a lot of stocks, certain things, you know what I'm saying? So I started buying that and like got away from buying diamonds and those type of things. These I already kind of had because you know, those don't really add no value, just like giving people free game, you feel me? And mm. then with Sideshow, you know, that's my twin, Sideshow Bob, Sideshow Rob, you feel me? Because it's, it's interesting <laughs> because, bro, you cut your hair, like, and this is something we never talked about. Mm. Like, you had these dope dreads, and people get on me when I, like, try to highlight men. You know, I said that with Edelman, the, the chat on the YouTube channel, I'm gonna say it again. I was like, oh, Julian Edelman. He's top five handsome guys. I was, I went out there. Whoa. Yeah, you wasn't on the show, and and, and and everybody in the audience was like, get on me. They're like, yo, pause. pause. Yeah, right. Correct. I don't care. I'm, I, I'm secure in my man. You think he handsome? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's, that's right. Like. Boom. So I'm gonna do it again. Like, I'm like, yo, your dreads was nice, mm. but I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Your dreads was nice. Then you cut your dreads, and then you come back and you literally lock up again. Like, so why did you do that a couple of years ago? And What's the significance behind that? Cause like my dreads, when they were like skinny and all that, like, I don't want to be less like that. You know, that's not really my stilo, you feel me? Like my lady, she be trying to tell me go back to that, but you know where I'm from, we walk rock bumps, you feel me? Wits. What? Bumps. That's what we call it. I used to call it in bride. People call it wits now, but that's just, it's just my swag. You feel me? It's more comfortable. Like it fits me. Right. And and like, you know, you got all them skinny dreads, you know, to it take too long, hurt too much. So I don't be like dealing with all that. So how you feel about Pax, little skinny dread? <laughs> ain't nothing wrong, ain't nothing wrong with it. You feel me? Like that's bro, that's bro vibe. I don't have no, I ain't discriminating. I ain't saying okay. it's ass or I man. told my wife I was going to try to do that. And she like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, oh, so wait, that's called wits? Yeah. They, that's what we, what we, how I grew up, we used to call it bunks. You feel bunks. me? That's what we used to call you it. You call it wits. But South Florida, they call it wicks and it's all kind of different names for it. Um, what the, what is this cartoon you keep posting? Does it have some kind of factor to do with your image? I went on your Instagram and you keep posting some kind of yeah, yeah, that's cartoon slide, yeah. or image. What the hell is that about? That's Who's Simpsons. Who's Sideshow Bob? Okay. That's, yeah. that's, uh, The Simpsons. Yeah. You said yeah. it's twin, so, that's so what you said? That, is that your, 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 your on the field ego, alter ego? Nah. Or is it it's just your... Nah, it just ironically, my hair and his hair look similar. I don't know if I had somebody pointed that out to me, or, but I kind of like took it and ran with it and then dropped a piece. And one time I was at on um, like Universal or something, bro, ran down on me, you feel me? Twins, you feel me? Like one day they probably put us in the episode together. So now for the listeners. Yeah. The chain is who? Sideshow Bob. Sideshow Bob. From you don't know who Sideshow Bob I don't. I don't. I don't, you don't never, watch I don't watch cartoons. My life was too fast, Brandon. You tripping, bro. The Simpsons? No, for real. Ask my wife. He said, so, like, what was you watching? Bro, I'm not, I don't know. Simpsons ain't kids, though. Yeah, but like you grow up, we you, you we grew up watching kids. that. They kids, they drinking it, barely. Nah, ain't ain't for kids. I didn't watch cartoons. I was just, I missed that part of life. <laughs> you watch um, Big Beach? Back to what we were <laughs> What is it again, sir? Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. From The Simpsons, yeah. okay. And that's your twin? Yeah, that's my twin. I love it. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time with Kodak. You spend a lot of time with Lamar Jackson. Um, there's like a, a special culture when it comes to South Florida, but there's a distinct difference between 
Dade County and Broward County. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like, why y'all so protective of Broward County? Cause for so long, Broward didn't get like that recognition. You know what I'm saying? Um, Dade was like, they had all the football players. Mm. They had the rappers, you know what I'm saying? Broward, we ain't really had, like we had that with amongst each other, but not globally, you know what I'm saying? So it's like for us to now, it's not no competition, you know what I'm saying? Love for Dave, West Palm, the whole Florida, you know what I'm saying? No competition amongst us, but for us to now have like, you know, be getting our flowers and our recognition and everybody doing their thing now, it's like, you know, it feels good amongst each other. Yeah. So, I mean, DJ, you was adopted. Yeah. Because you're really from Cali, but you were not boy and you ain't never left. And I moved down to Florida and I kind of consider myself at times a Florida boy. What's the difference between, you know, Broward and, and the rest of Florida? I mean, just and, and can you define that? It's a lot of differences, you know, the music we listen to, how we dress, you know, just our vibe, you know, I, I where know, we, our, our area, you know for, what I'm saying? For me, Broward feels a little more gutter. Broward feels, um, not as diluted, uh, and I know people from Miami, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, perfect example. I can't understand majority of what people from Broward say. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, like if I could break it down in a nutshell, right. and it's like, they probably 30, 40 minutes away. Right. And why does it sound like, you know what I mean? Right, they got like, their own language. Yeah, it's like they got they got their own language, they, they style of dress and just everything. So for me, and again, you know what? I, I, I don't want to say more gutter, but I'll, I'll say it just seemed, Broward to me seemed more condensed. Meaning Miami, um, I would say people from Miami sometimes got influenced by- Commercialized. Commercial, influenced by New York, California, te- all these other places. And Broward is like condensed. Florida, kind of landlocked. So is Broward the realest? I, I can't be the judge. Of that. I can't. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not from Florida, so I can't. Yeah, no, be, I no, can't, no, you've been out here. No, no, no. I'm not from Florida. I, I can't be the judge of that. Since you're speaking like that, what, what's on your playlist like right now? Uh, I got on um, sipping paint for like mothers or like women. You know what I'm saying? Hosted by my fiance coming up on July 16th. You know what I'm saying? Then I got my kids count July 24. Mm. You know, for for the kids and Broward, whoever come out, you know what I'm saying, for free and all them things. Like, and I don't know, I just always, like my biggest thing was always, I want to give back to where I'm from because growing up, the only football player we had was Asante and like Michael Irvin, Isaac Bruce, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that mm. was it. Now it's, it's about one of us on every team, you feel me? And I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm the big brother because from this new generation of us, I was the first one to get into the league. And then after me came Eddie Jackson, Calvin Ridley, you know, Hollywood, Lamar, Trayvon Mullen, Chris LeBons, you know, the whole the whole rundown plus more, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, now it's like we really doing it. Like how they was when they had Ocho and all them dudes, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really like that for Brian. Like the trajectory from Brian was, ball out in high school, fall victim to the streets, you feel me? That ain't the case no more, like, you know what I'm saying? And then we got dudes like Goldfeet, Global, who's in the in the community, showing the young boys how to get where they need to go, you know what I'm saying? And then us putting it on display too, and then all them kids in college and all that too. So, you know, it made me feel proud to know, like, that's my biggest inspiration is to see Broward, like, be on the map and then with music too, Kodak opened the door for music. It wasn't all these rappers, SCG Heem on his way, you know what I'm saying? Shimmy, Trapland, Pat, like everybody really like doing their thing. And that's just from that platform too, but also too, I don't want kids to be confused and think that's the only way out. It's more than just that. You don't gotta be successful just to be famous or rich. You feel me? You could be successful and be a teacher working a gas station. You know what I'm saying? Success is not just tangible, you feel me? So. I know that that's motivating, but that's not the only avenue either. But that's just like, you know what people see. Okay, so I, want, I hear I what you're say saying. I want to say one more thing, because I, I got to. Yeah. So I, I rethought about what I said. 
<laughs> why you? Why you feel no, like you're so I'm strategic good, good. with this? Because though, it's, it's important. You must be. You nah, must nah, be nah. associated with some real nah, nah, people. No, no, no. It's cause... important. It's important, dog. Because, like <laughs> you said, I was adopted by man, Miami, and I rock and I f with Miami. So when I think about it, Broward kind of reminds me of like kind of Houston, meaning like they got their own lane, they got their own language, they got their own dialect, and again, like it hasn't been influenced by the outside. Right. So did you have an alter ego? Yeah, we spoke about it today. Uh, my alter ego is actually my real name and myself. So you have Genos and you have DJ. Yeah. Genos is, we spoke about it today. Genos is Drop Dead Fred. When you came to Denver and you hung out, that was Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> so I take him, I put him in a box. He only gets to come out three times a year. Right, if you say his name in the mirror five times, he coming out. What I've learned, <laughs> what I've learned is, it was a year where I tried to just keep him away the whole time. The motherfucker gonna figure out how to get out. <laughs> and when he do, he gonna call his hell. <laughs> so- Bring him up, I like him. Yeah? Huh? I love him. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't. No, 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 everybody, everybody- I'm listen. so done with this part Everybody of loved Gino. The first show we did, that was Gino. <laughs> oh, nah, lock him up. <laughs> lock him up. <laughs> We had to fight to get a meal, yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pills. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know, despite your skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam, you gotta like the we get wheels straight up. But in the past bad, work up in the trash bag. I'll pass a lot to take the test before I pass class. Yeah, And my family needed bread, I had to come correct. That's why I keep airing it out like I just passed gas. 